With all the conversions you may have set up within your Google Ads account, not all of them are going to be weighed the same. A purchase event or a form submission is most likely more important to you than someone just clicking on a link. And as advertisers, we do have the control while setting up conversions in Google Ads to tell Google which conversions we feel are more important. These are going to be tracked in your main conversions column. Now the all conversions column, which we're going to talk about today, will keep track and report on every single conversion that you have set up within your account and how they are impacting your campaigns. So in this video, we will show you how to adjust this setting and where you can find the all conversions column so you can better look and review to optimize your campaigns. I'm in one of our client accounts and I'm at the campaign level. So the columns you see right now are just one high level snapshot column setting I'd like to save to quickly review overall metrics. And we can see here, there is the conversions column. Most of the campaigns are converting, but with all conversions, we get a different view. So to find the all conversions columns, you can always modify your column set by going up to columns, and then we will modify this set. Of course, all conversions will live under conversions. If I scroll down a little bit, all of the main conversion column options that are towards the top are repeated below, but with all conversion numbers. So I'm not gonna select all of these for now, I'm just gonna click on all conversions, and then I'll just go over here, and then I wanna drag it next to conversions, so then we can look and compare these two numbers. So I'll need to click apply, and there you'll notice if I move over a little bit, the differences in conversion numbers between the conversions column and the all conversions column. Your all conversions column should have the same number or a higher number of conversions than the main conversions column. So then if this is all new to you, the first question you probably have is, why are these numbers different? And the reason is, the advertiser gets to select which conversion actions they want to have included in either of the conversion columns. And to explain this further, we're gonna go into the conversion section within your tools and settings. So let me head on up to tools and settings, and then we can look at conversions, which will live in the measurement column. For this client, we see several conversion categories, and hopefully you already know that you need to have conversion tracking set up in order to look at the conversion columns. But your conversion actions are broken into specific conversion categories. We have submit lead form, there's a phone call lead category, there's a contact link category, and we see there are separate conversion actions within each of these categories. The first one under submit lead form, this form submit event is one that is actually on the website. This lead form submit event is from the lead form assets that we can attach to our search and video campaigns. You can learn more about lead form assets right here. There we see phone calls coming directly from our ads, whether it's a call only campaign or a call asset. And under contact, we are tracking email link clicks to see if people are reaching out to the sales emails that are on some of our website pages. Now, if you look at the action optimization for this email link click conversion action, it's listed as a secondary conversion. And I'm calling this out specifically because any secondary conversion action will not be reported in the main conversions column. And for this particular client, we have listed email link clicks as a secondary action because just clicking on a link doesn't mean that it's an actual lead. We have no proof that the person who clicked on the email link actually sent the email let alone that it got through and they got a hold of the salesperson to actually be qualified as a lead. But it's still an action that we want to keep track of. So we still will mark it as a conversion. We're just going to list it as a secondary action. So any email link click will not show up in the main conversions column. However, all of your secondary actions, since Google considers them as observation only, they are included in the all conversions column reporting. So we can see if some of these lower value actions, again, always defined by the advertiser, are having an impact on the campaign, whether it's positive or negative. I know it seems weird to track actions that may not be fully important to you. However, if you have the capacity to set these conversions up within Google Ads, you can see if they are distracting users from taking the main action that you want them to take on your website or your landing pages. So maybe before you start reviewing your all conversions columns, Look at all the conversion actions that you have set up that are running and still enabled within your Google Ads account. Anything that you have listed as a secondary conversion action will only show up in your all conversions columns. But let me head back to the main campaign view, and then let's look at creating a new campaign. I'm gonna click on the blue plus button and click on new campaign. If we're talking about conversions, I wanna keep it at a deeper focus, so I'm gonna stick with leads. 
I do want to mention this section here because sometimes it does get confused with what's actually tracking as a goal for your campaign. When you're building a campaign, Google's going to ask which conversion goals you want to use to help try to improve whatever you have selected as your campaign objective or your campaign goal. You do have the option, like if I click on the side here, to remove certain goal categories from this section when you're setting up a new campaign. Yes, it will quote unquote remove the goal, but you're not actually doing that. If you actually read what it says, Google's going to no longer use the goal category to optimize the campaign. Goal tracking will still work. So if I remove it, again, further warning that it's just going to use it to optimize the campaign. This has no impact on what is a primary goal and a secondary goal action that will be recorded in our conversions and all conversions columns. Okay, so everything you need to do, again, will live in your tools and settings and conversions. Focus on your primary and secondary conversion actions. Now, if I click on one conversion action, you can always go within a goal setting to edit the settings. And under goal and action optimization, here is where you can change the specific category and then choose if you want the action to be a primary or secondary action. And always understand that any changes you make to the conversion, it will most likely impact reporting and also bidding optimization for any campaign using this conversion action. Let's head back to the main campaign view. And there we see we still have the conversions and all conversions columns. When I am comparing the two, there's a few things that I like to do to review. The main thing will be to segment the data. So if you click on segment, head down to conversions, and then look at your conversion category. In this particular account, we had all the email clicks under this contact category. Again, it's just clicking on a link with no proof that they actually sent an email to us. It's just keeping an eye on an action. Let me jump down a little bit. There we see it in a few different ways too. In this particular campaign, all the additions that we're getting are from this one action. Same thing with this other campaign right here, two more conversion actions. Now, like I said, every account is different. You may set up your conversion tracking as well as the action optimization differently than this account. And that's fine if it works for you. So you may know the name of every single conversion action that you have listed as a secondary action. If I head back up to segments, you can look at conversion action instead of conversion category. And here we see highlighted up top here, email link click as we had as the secondary conversion action. It's only included in the all conversions number. Same thing with this bottom campaign, email link click only included in the all conversions column. Luckily, this account is simple and only has the one secondary conversion action. So I know exactly what is gonna be additional within the all conversions column. But to give you another example of why you may want to review all conversions, let's head to a specific landing page that I just discovered on Google. If you wanna know why I chose this, my wife just bought some. It's literally one of the last products I saw within my house before recording this video. We have no affiliation with them, but I did find one of their ads and clicked on the landing page. I have no idea how they have their conversion tracking set up. This is just a hypothetical scenario here. So of course, the main action that they want you to do on this page is to buy one of their products. So most likely, they have the purchase completion set up as a primary goal action as well as the conversion value associated with it. But there's more things that a user can do on this page. If we keep scrolling down, we do see other actions. And one for sure is always visible on the page. I'm not talking about the accessibility part. That's always just great to have. I'm looking at this 20% off action. And that is a newsletter signup. Many of our clients have newsletter signup forms on them. I have one client particularly that kills it with email. We can't even come close to their conversion and close rates with email. So one of the main goals of our campaigns is just to collect as many emails as possible. And we have set that up as a primary action. Now for other clients where email isn't as important or it just doesn't bring as much value, sometimes our newsletter goals for clients are a secondary conversion action. We still wanna keep track of how many people are performing this action, but it's not the main goal. I have to close out of this twice. If we go back up to the top, remember buying was the first thing we saw. That is the main goal of this particular landing page. So it really depends on the value you look up for each additional conversion action. Sometimes if we scroll down a little bit more, I'll see if there's any other conversion actions on here. Oh, just a lot going on. Maybe we're shopping other products, but we'll be tracking those later on. Another way to subscribe. There's a chat option on here, a contact us option. So not too many conversion actions on this page, but there are still multiple things a user can do. If you are leaving certain actions, like the multiple newsletter signup options that we saw on this page, as secondary conversion actions, 
We won't see them in our main conversion column, but you'll still be able to see how many people are performing those actions. So maybe you have YouTube videos embedded on your site. There are many ways that you can track video engagement, picture engagement, chat engagement, and then use that information to see if people are at least engaging with your campaigns or what are they doing once they get to your landing page. Long-term brand engagement is still valuable in our eyes, but we still want to make sure that it's not distracting users from the main action we want them to take on the landing page. Or we do want to see if those secondary conversion actions have any sort of correlation with driving more primary actions on the pages. And that is just one landing page option to show you how certain actions on the page can dictate how you have your goals set up for your campaigns. Now might be a great time for most of you to review your conversion setup, especially if you're an account that really relied on importing analytics conversions into the account. Hopefully by now you have switched your universal analytics conversions to GA4, otherwise your numbers might not look that great. But double check to see how you have your conversion actions set up within your account. Conversions really are the lifeblood of running campaigns within Google. Make sure you understand which actions you have labeled as primary important actions and secondary actions. So then you can review the secondary actions within your all conversions columns for your reporting. Are your secondary actions distracting users from performing the primary actions that are the goals of your campaigns? Or maybe you see a correlation of secondary actions that occur that may not be top priority actions eventually will lead to those main conversion actions occurring. You won't know until you look at the columns and review the information. I know I added just the all conversions column to compare conversions and all conversions, but any main conversions column has a related all conversions option. So you can look at all conversion rate, cost per all conversions, all conversion value if you have revenue attached to any of your actions, okay? Look at more of those columns than just your main conversion actions and see if there are any other changes you can make to your conversion settings to give you the information you need to better optimize your campaigns. If you have any other questions about all conversions within Google Ads, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.